So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm pleased to be here with all of you. My name is Summer McCulley. I'm the Events and Program Specialist with BC Food and Beverage. And I just want to say a quick thank you to our uh, webinar sponsor, Van City, for sponsoring our 2023 webinars. And I'm very happy to introduce Phil and Kenny from This Commerce Life, who will be um, guiding this conversation today. So I'll let the two of you take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sumner, thanks for having us. Um, it's going to be pretty fun, I think. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, let me share my screen. We're we're going to talk about content and how content uh, content calendar drives SEO. Um, so we, we, we're on here with Sumner last year talking about how, you know, some SEO for basics. So this is kind of like the double up on that is if you, um, if you haven't watched that, you should probably go back and watch it, but um, that doesn't kind of exclude you from this. We, we've got kind of a lot to talk about. So let me just share my screen. Okay. And then I think um, in this process is as we go, if you have questions, um, maybe um, punch them in the the chat section. We'll keep an eye on the chat section um, so that we can we can kind of answer them as we go if we want. Um, but um, we'll get going because there's there's actually quite a bit. So um, so I'm Phil. This is Kenny. Um, uh, and and we were this commerce life. We're we're a podcast that. Um, we're a podcast that's super passionate about um, Canadian retail. Um, we love, um, love, love, love the stories uh, of entrepreneurs and their journeys to success. Um, we've got a whole whack of episodes in here. Um, so 295 and counting. Um, and uh, so if you're you're um, looking to learn a little bit more about CP, CPG and retail, definitely have a listen. Um, if you're looking for CPG people, retailers, brands, you can certainly hit us up and, and um, you know, we've probably got some connections. Um, the other one, because I saw his name in here, um, is obviously we want you listening to this Commerce Life, but um, our friend Alex Osborne is is on this uh, conference call too, and um, Alex is part of Hearts and Carts, um, and they're a super cool podcast as well. So if you're not listening to us, you should go listen to them. Um, one of the two will do. Um, but, uh, but we kind of love, um, retail and what's that or both. or both. Well, yeah, you should ideally just replace what you're listening to with both of ours, but okay, that's better. Um, I'm off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a link in this to the other SEO presentation. If you haven't seen that, you, um, should try and, uh, make some time to go see that. Um, so before we kind of start talking about SEO and how content works, um, we just want to make sure that we kind of call out that um, a really common thing that a lot of companies do is they build a strategy. So you do your kind of mission, vision, purpose. Um, we do a target audience. We talk about personas. And then we kind of set all that aside. And then we kind of go and run the business, the social media, the web, the SEO, the banner ads, the mobile. So um, this is a really common thing. Um, Kenny and I have actually had entrepreneurs who, or people have been in business a long time who said, you know, the mission, vision, purpose thing, it just kind of like we do it and then it goes over there somewhere. Um, it's really important that you keep these tied together. Um, you'll see it in all of the stuff that we do today, um, but it's really important that you have them connected. Um, it, that's not to say if, um, you don't have a mission, vision, and purpose that you should panic, but certainly if you have one, they should coincide and they should tie and be consistent with the social media, the web, the SEO, the banners, the mobile stuff that you put out. Um, everything you do should be tied together. Um, you know, 360 marketing is really about, like 360 is a really fancy term. It's really about consistency. Um, and so if you have consistency through your messaging, the way you think about the business, the way you see the business. Um, it helps the consumer, your customer see your business the same way. And that reflects in everything. Um, you'll actually be able to measure it in your SEO, your social media, um, if you use them in conjunction with your strategy and your plans. 
Okay. Um, so a little bit of a precursor. Some of this we'll go through quick before we get to the heavier parts, but definitely kind of important to make sure that we have these and and you were kind of uh, moving in check, right? So um, small things, not small things, but um, more reminders, right? Your customer, who are they, right? So stay focused on your audience. Make sure you know who your customer is. Um, when they're not in your store, where else do they go? Um, so when you were starting, if you're starting your business or you started your business and you are going, Think about like all those questions that you start with in terms of like, who are they? What do they do? What do they think about? What, why would they come and find me? What problem am I solving for them? All of those things are things that you always kind of need to keep in your, in your mindset, right? So, um, so important to kind of keep your eye on the customer. Um, you know, what do they watch and listen to? What are they most worried about? What kinds of emotional levers? So again, what kind of problems are you solving for them? And then what questions do you have? Uh, what don't you know about your consumer? So all of these things are, are things that are super, super important. Okay. Um, we've started mapping out some stuff. Um, Kenny and I, if you, you, if you don't know us, we, we, um, Kenny and I are, um, we've like five and a half years together. Our um, existences are starting to coincide. Sometimes we laugh about that. I laugh about that because our poor spouses um, Kenny's in the West coast. So I'm up a lot earlier. And that means that when Kenny and his household wake up, I'm usually a voice and a face. And so his poor wife wakes up hearing my voice. And then when she comes home from work, she hears my poor voice. So, um, so, but we do think we do a lot of things together. So Kenny, Kenny and I are also, um, co-founders in a business called old, old growth beverages. We've used some of those examples in here to see, to show you that, we also do this in our real life. So this isn't just a webinar. This isn't something that we, um, you know, that we kind of just talk about and then not do. We do this in our everyday. And then also we're not perfect, right? As we tell you to do this and we know these things are hard to do and there are moments when you don't get to them all. Um, and so we're not different that way. Um, so when you start mapping out who your audience is, right? So sometimes it's really simple. Um, this grid is a really simple way to do it. Um, your target audience, who they are, sometimes it's very specific. Um, the more you know about your business, the more specific it'll get. Sometimes it's just this simple, you know, like for us, it's tea and coffee drinkers. We know this already, right? Um, the elevator pitch. So what is it? How do you describe it? Often you already know how to do this because you do this with um, people around you when you say, um, you know, um, you know, what do you do for a living, right? Or, or what are you selling? And then you've got that kind of like 30 seconds, you know what they are. And then having some pillars that you can work around, right? So for us, that's instant and microground tea. There's a healthy and organic component. And then we think there's going to be an experiential moment, but we don't quite know what that is yet, right? And then we've written in some headline benefits. So a lot of this is really important stuff. If you don't have this, um, we've left this here so that you can start to map out against this. Um, and it, and again, it doesn't necessarily need to be wholly thought out. You don't need to spend months and months on this. Um, you you kind of need to work this as, as something that um, you you know you you build as you go, you evolve it as you go as you develop your customer set. Um, once you have those, you have the basic elements of a marketing message. So you have an audience, you have a value proposition, you have key phrases that you can use um, in communications of all kinds, print, digital, verbal. Um, this, this step beforehand, this, the target audience bit, it's really critical because if you don't have this, um, it's, it's, it's where the digital piece starts to break out and then you start doing things independently, but it'll keep you from really getting great organic traffic, um, you know, kind of consistency in what you do. And then it also brings you um, an unclear set of customers uh, in a lot of times. So it takes you longer to get to where you want to go. So um, with that, those parts set you up for a communication plan. So we sometimes we say it's a marketing plan, but it's really a communication plan, right? So if you've got your if you've got those pieces, 
you have all the pieces that you need to communicate with a consumer, um, you know, that will buy your product. So whether you're B2B or you're B2C, having all of those little bits help you to get to content and help you to get to a place that allows you to um, build content and a content calendar that will also help with your SEO. Okay. Um, there's kind of a couple of ways to think about a content calendar. So um, a lot of times when you start building a business, you've got a lot of things to do. Um, you may get to some of that other stuff, the, um, you know, the marketing message and, and your audience and things like that. And then a lot of times you get to content and content is like this big and lofty word. So we think about creators, we think about, um, you know, like, oh, I've got to be able to shoot content. I've got to uh, build blogs. I've got to do all these things. And it's a bit paralyzing. There's a couple of ways to think about this, right? So um, the way that everyone kind of suggests that you start, which is, it's not a terrible way to start, um, is to think about the traditional calendar. So you start in January, you work your way through to December, and you think about key moments in your consumer's year. So things like um, birthdays, dog days, um, special events, things like that, um, you know, um, you know, trade shows, key community events, anything that uh, matters based on what we built, right? So, um, you know, if you think of like, we're in April, we just passed Easter, Easter would be something that you would go, oh, well, maybe I can build something around Easter, maybe I can build something around the long weekend in May, or um, Canada Day, um, you know, things like that, that help you start to build out a traditional calendar. Um, so you can do that, you can totally build around that. Um, there is an entire set of like national days out there that you could, you know, kind of build your world around. Um, so it's a, it's a great kind of, it's not great. It's an okay way to be able to build um, things because it gives you a perspective around which you can build. Um, where Kenny and I are, are about to show you, um, you know, what we, what we would do instead, because we we find um, this process is a little too generic. Um, it it what we find in this is that it starts to make you um, force your your business communications around key events that may or may not have anything to do with who you are or what you might do. Um, you know, so like today, for example, today is National Lookalike Day. National Pineapple Upside Down Cake Day. Um, oh, it's actually National Day Podcast. So yay. So one thing that's good for us. Um, but having said that, um, you can see, right? So so National Lookalike Day probably doesn't help anyone on this call, um, right? And National Pineapple Upside Down Cake Day probably would make most of us pretty happy. Um, but again, doesn't really help any of us, right? So, um, you know, so the National Podcast Day, that's kind of cool, um, particularly for Kenny and I and for for um, Alex, who's on this call, but um, for the rest of you, again, probably doesn't mean a whole lot, right? Um, so this is one way to do it. This is really common when you go out and you kind of look at content calendars. And this is what you'll see is, is people go, oh, you know, uh, April Fool's Day, you know, Easter, probably the only key commercial moments that most of us could build something around is something like Boxing Day, um, Black Friday, maybe, um, you know, and then if you have seasonal events, maybe you can build around those like Valentine's Day or a, a May 2-4 weekend, that sort of thing. But for the rest of us, it's, it leaves a whole set of days that you're kind of going, what, what do I do, right? How do I, how do I bend my business around a calendar? Um, the second way to do this is really where we would love to see you guys go. Um, and so when you build your content, what you really want to do is take the work that you've done out of your marketing message, your kind of audience, the people that you know, the, the, the emotional selling points, the solving a problem for someone and make that the center of everything you do. So your message, that marketing message that we kind of, we, we showed you in the beginning becomes the center of everything you do. And when you start to do that, what happens out of that is you say, 
this is my message. And then there are keywords, right? So keywords is, is the words that people would go online and search for to solve the problem they have. Um, you would make a list of keywords out of those that are important to you for problems that you solve, that consumers will be able to find. They go, oh, I got it. These guys solve that problem. You know, what do I do, right? Those keywords then, you would take those and start to form content. So in this case, I've used blog um, because I find when I say content, people paralyze, um, people get a little get a little nervous, right? Because um, content tends to be this really kind of like big nebulous word. Um, so if you use something simple like a blog, um, and, and this actually works. So um, we've done this for multiple businesses where if you actually follow just this and you don't deviate, it works great. Um, but just know that this is kind of the base and then blog, you can substitute for almost anything. But if you took your set of keywords that came out of your messaging that you built, and then you said out of those keywords, what keywords go together and what topics can I write out of that that become parts of my blog, right? Um, and when you do that, your blog gets put up, the SEO from it starts to drive organic search to your site, whether they read your blog or not, right? Um, but it starts to drive people to you and then it creates a consistency in people knowing what it is that you're talking about, what problems you solve and how you should solve for them. Um, and so that becomes something that, um, you know, starts to help you form organic SEO down here. And then when you talk about it in socials, that starts to drive, again, more consistency, um, you know, more, you know, sort of things. I'll give you an example in a sec, because um, I'll show you how we've kind of used this term. Um, and then and then finally, then you you double down on that, right? So you take all of that, all of the same words that you've used that in your blog, in your SEO, that has generated you SEO that you've also talked about in socials, and you throw them into an ad. And then the ad generates you even more momentum before you go back to your message and say, great, I've talked about that. What else would I like to talk about and start the cycle all over again? Okay, so um, the example. Okay, so the benefits of doing this number two, um, and then I'll give you an example. I apologize. I, I forgot the slide was here. Um, you're not, so the benefits of doing what I just said is you're not competing with everyone else on a traditional calendar. So you're not competing with Easter anymore. You're not competing with uh, May 2-4 weekend. You're not competing on Valentine's Day or July 1st or any of those things. This is about you and what's important for your business. You control the keywords that you want to be known for. Um, and you're also not fighting for attention. So if you think of Black Friday is a really good example is Black Friday is supposed to be the last Friday of the month of November, right? After American Thanksgiving. And because Black Friday has become the sale that is overwhelming, you see brands compete for that attention earlier and earlier. And now we get Black Fridays in what, Kenny, August, September, August, right? Like it should be November, but everyone's competing for the same share of voice. So you start to roll that back, right? Well, it's not Black Friday anymore, right? But we're doing it because we're hooked to that word that that's the word that tells that there's a big sale going on, right? Um, so your control of the words that you're after, your control of, of the events that you're after, and then you're also writing content that matters to the customer or the consumer you're trying to talk to, which means it'll be meaningful content. So important. Okay. Um, so uh, sorry, I was going to give you an example. Um, I've got these a little bit out of order, but let, let me show you what an example looks like. So, and then I'll go back and kind of talk about it for a second. Um, so Here's what what I did is, is so you can start anywhere in this process. But for us, for us on the tea business, we have ingredients in our tea that are really important to us that we would like to be known for. 
Um, you know, I've given you an example. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of things that we could be known for. Um, I've just picked a handful of them, right? So our chai tea is one of our most popular teas. In that chai is things like ginger, cardamom, matcha, vanilla, bergamot, right? Um, and so, um, you know, in our teas, this is important to us. Um, and so we've set up those keywords as things that we would like to talk about. Um, to do that is what we did is we set up a blog that's called Spice Up Your Life. Um, and, and what we're targeting is each one of the spices that occur in any of our teas, we're going to do a little blog for, right? So that's 10 spices. So far, we have four of those blogs up that talk about each one of them. So we've got a ginger, we've got a cardamom, I think we've got a cinnamon, and then there's there's one more that I can't remember, right? Um, and that's, you know, blogs that we've done, you know, that help us drive organic SEO, right? So now we're talking about things that are important to us, that are ingredients. Um, we've broken down what ginger could mean to you in your life, the roots of ginger, where we started using it as a, as a human race, and then some interesting things about ginger, right? So just general education stuff. But what we've seen is, People who drink the tea are interested in the ingredients. They want to know more. So now they're clicking on it. They're reading it. And then we're getting ranked for things, um, ingredients that are in our tea that actually make a difference. So now we're getting organic SEO out of it. So, you know, by doing kind of like four blogs, we're, we're up 40 plus words um, and counting. And, and it kind of like doubles itself every day because more people find it. So we build more organic traffic, which then in turn drives more people to read it, um, which then in turn drives more keyword rankings for us. Um, as we get there, we'll start to add, um, you know, static Facebook posts, Instagram, you know, on the blogs, on each of the ingredients. And then we'll start to get into ads that will help people convert and drive them to us, right? And so that's kind of a, a really good, Kind of life example of of how you go about this process, right? So um, as you do this, things like um, you know, like blog, where you see blog, it could be a blog, it could be um, a vlog, it could be um, a YouTube video, it could be a TikTok video, it could be you know, you're going to start to think about like how you do that different in terms of getting that into your life. OK, um, so this is kind of how you start to build this process for what this looks like. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to do, and I think I got into this a bit too early, was I wanted to just talk about campaigns. Right. So um, our experiences when you talk about campaigns, unless you're a marketer of some sort, everyone else looks at a campaign and goes, what the heck is that? Like everyone talks about campaigns, but what the heck is that? And so if you know what that is, cool. If you don't know. A campaign is really a fancy word for coordinated effort. Um, and this is the, it's like an amplification of a message, right? And so the, the anytime that you put out a message, what you want to be able to do is coordinate that across everything you do, because it's hard to get hurt, right? Um, it's hard to get hurt and it's hard to get people to hear you. And so the more you have to say on a single topic, the more you get heard, the more chances you are that you'll get the touches that you need for um, consumers to know who you are and then to be able to to be able to do the, you know, to be able to find you and then know what you stand for. Okay. So your message and keywords, they turn into organic content. And then you use your blog, the organic SEO that comes from that, the ads and the social media stuff to tie it all together. So you're amplifying a single message. Okay. So if I come back here now for a second, I add an extra layer to this is um, this campaign for us is called the Spice Up Your Life campaign, which is essentially we're going to build a set of blogs that talk about the spices that we have in our tea. Um, we're going to talk about them a lot. We're going to bring you some interesting ideas. We're going to bring you maybe little known facts about um, each of those spices that in turn gets people reading, that in turn gets us organic SEO, um, which gets more people searching. Anyone who's searching for those ingredients now will rank, will find us because we're starting to rank higher, which means they'll be more curious about what we do. Um, 
you know, and then ultimately what we want, obviously, is in each of the articles, we link what we call a call to action, a CTA, um, because we would like them to um, find one of our T's. So, for example, the cardamom article has, um, you know, a link to our chai, which cardamom is a part of. So if they love cardamom, now they have uh, some new facts on cardamom, and they also have, um, you know, the ability to then buy our chai if that's what they want to do. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, this is this is kind of like the core of what we want to talk about because this is these are the big parts, right? This feels maybe a little simple, but at the same time, it's it's what kind of makes everything kind of move. Now, um, take a deep breath. <laughs> we just wanted to show you kind of how this thing plays out. So um, it is simple in the sense that we're focused. I gave you kind of a simplification or a simple view. And then what a campaign, what campaigns over the year look like, right? So you've got a vanilla campaign that will have its own set of keywords that are associated with vanilla, a blog on vanilla, SEO ads and socials. Ginger will have its own stack. So you kind of need to read these vertically. Um, and then these become things that start to, you know, kind of stack on each other, right? Because these keywords, um, as you as you kind of amplify your message, they start to stack on top of each other. So now you've got really a campaign that has two, four, six, seven in here. And if you recall, we we identified that we had um, ten we had ten spices we want to talk about. I only gave you seven, um, partially because that's all I could remember at the time, but also because um, ten is hard to fit on this page. But you get the idea here that what we're trying to do is um, create a series of these that allow you to now, now I don't care. So in here, what you can see is I don't really care if it's Canada day. I don't care if it's labor day. I don't care if it's um, mother's day, which is coming up or father's day or anything like that. No, no concerns whatsoever. Now, if national tea day is in here somewhere in one of these, then yeah, my social post here might have, a mention to National Tea Day, or I'm sure there's a National Peppercorn Day, there's probably a National Cinnamon Day, there's probably a National... So we can fit those in here somewhere, but they don't drive me. I mentioned... I think that's sort of the point, Phil, yeah. is I think what everybody needs to sort of understand with it, the traditional and typical way of doing this, especially if you're hiring uh, outside people to help you with your marketing, the easiest way to do it, and I'll say, because Phil will be a lot kind or less kind than, or more kind than I will be. The easiest way to do it is you follow holidays, whatever date. To me, those are great. But if I use like a sports analogy, if you want to compete on the ice or on the field, you don't put an equal team on the field. You put a team that's stacked with better players and positions. So you play to your strengths and you play to their weaknesses. The game is about winning. I don't mm -hmm. want to be the same. I don't want to be in the same noise. So if I follow traditional patterns, everybody is chatting about Easter. I mean, if you really think the whole purpose of this is so that you can be found, your business can be found, your concept or your idea. If you are amongst a lot of noise on the same day and everybody's talking the same, it's a very difficult concept. If you look at what your business is and what your core fundamentals are like ours in our tea here we are a micro ground instant tea um, that you can fully consume get all the antioxidant benefit antioxidant benefits of the tea etc plus all these wonderful key ingredients the more we talk about these and the more we cater our marketing and content to these it helps us in organic search so potentially if someone is looking up either instant tea or maybe they're looking at cardamom and tea cardamom in general, we have odds of being found. If someone types in Easter, you are going to be amongst 20 billion searches. So really what you're trying to do is find those pockets where you can really start to shine. You determine your world and your search. Sorry, Paul. No, no, no. I, I, I think that's perfect because I think, I think that is 
the point here, right? Is is that you you really do you focus on you focus on what you have, not what everybody else has, right? The calendar should just be something that fits in your world. That's not to say if you are, you know, because there are brands that we, you know, we're all consumer focused brands, right? So for Mother's Day, would I love if someone bought OGB tea to give to their mom? We would love that. But I'm not necessarily going to, I, I might build a campaign around that, but the truth is I probably won't, right? Because I'm not worried about that, right? I'm not going to compete that way. I'm going to talk about what your mom might want. She might want, if your mom's favorite flavor is cinnamon or vanilla, it's a different way to approach somebody than saying, hey, 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 me too, me too. I've got something for Mother's Day. Um, you know, like, look at me, look at me, right? So this becomes, I don't actually give a crap, right? So if you think your mom's special, you should, and she loves vanilla, buy her some vanilla. We have some stuff with wicked vanilla in it. You should buy that, right? Like it's a totally different discussion. It is the thing that we're after, right? Because that changes the way you talk to a consumer. It changes the way that you um, you think about the business and it changes the way the consumer thinks about who you are. Um, okay, so a few things now, right? So if you've got that part, so this part is the this part is the biggest part. So if you have questions, I, I would definitely throw them in here. Um, the thing I would say to you is, if you have, um, if you're working through campaigns, the hardest parts about this are making matches. Sorry, I'm I'm scrolling because I want to make sure that the visualizations are there. So the target audience elevator pitch brand pillars and headline benefits tying this this is what we call the key message so if you kind of go there and you think about um your message which is that part here and then tying it to your keywords is usually where um a lot of things break right because uh, most people either get the message and then they go out and build keywords that don't tie to that right or um, they take the two, they tie them together, and then they fail to build them into these pieces. So um, important to kind of make sure that you understand where the ties are. If you have questions on that, you should definitely ask us because we um, this is what we do. It's probably the hardest part of what we do is being is telling brands that, hey, you built a really wicked message and you're not following through on any of them. Um, cannot tell you how many times that that has happened. Sometimes it goes well, most of the time, no, most of the time it goes okay um, because they realize that we're trying to help. And, and uh, but there are moments where they go angry, 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 right? Because you spend a lot of time, like, like this part, the blog, the SEO, the ads, the ads in particular, they cost a lot of money. They take a lot of time. Lots of people spend a lot of money on it, but if you're not doing the things that you need, um, you're not going to be able to figure out what those mean. But I think um, that's where the anger comes in from, because at, at the end yeah. of the day, the tendency is is to be pushed into ads and movement that way. Everybody mm -hmm. hops to the last two, not yeah. understanding. If you don't bid the fundamentals, if you don't start really, who is your customer? Go back to that first page, which seemed probably odd when we started this topic. But it goes back to relevance is you need to start there. You need to know who you're talking to and why you're talking to them and why they actually want to listen to you. Then you build your world around that. Like for, for our brand, we haven't started the ads yet. You know why? Because we could, but we don't know what we're spending against. Right now, we want to go on the cheap and we're trying our best to look at stuff, make sure we're playing the right keywords. Is it resonating? Are people finding organically? Then we can look at each other and say, you know what? Let's buck up. And let's put some pennies against this and let's now start to push that side. If you don't race to there, what are you advertising for then? I mean, maybe nobody's listening to your channel. Nobody, maybe nobody cares about your message. You need to really hone that part first. That's why Phil and I spend so much time on this and why we really think this is the place to really build content. Because this is, if, if you can't get it right here, it doesn't matter. You, then go back to Mother's Day, sure, whatever. It's not going to really matter. You really want to spend the time here. And I just don't think that that service is being provided by, by a lot of people. And I don't think we all spend enough time with it as owners and founders and et cetera. It's, it's a good point too, Kenny, is if you're thinking about this cycle, um, the other thing that you're 
you're doing in this process is you're testing to make yeah. sure that the message you put out is the right one to put yeah. out. Um, Before you spend against it. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you can spend a little bit and test, but like, I, I guess I liken this process to, you know, um, for anyone who um, has sold at a farmer's market or sold anywhere open air where you're getting consumers cold, you, you know, or actually, so think of either if you've been in a farmer's market situation where you're selling and the consumer knows nothing about who you are, or you've been at a trade show, right? Um, you know, where you're trying to get a, a buyer or someone to stop at your booth, again, who doesn't know who you are. And then you think of the process that it takes you to hone a message, right? You're doing it in your head, right? You're, hi, hi, do, do you want to come to the booth? You know, um, well, here's what we do. And then you're reading people's faces to go, oh, I just said all that and they have no idea what I do still. And so when they leave, you rapidly in your head think about how do I say that different? How do I get to something that's a little bit more tighter that draws people in? You're testing this process is the marketing test for that. So in your head, you do it quick in on paper and then through mechanics, it takes a little bit longer, but all of that work you did to kind of test your message and get organic SEO out, you are now testing to see if it actually comes back to you, right? So um, at the end of the day, your ads, you know, the, the content that you put out, the organic SEO that you put out, um, all of this should come back to you in a way that helps you measure, hey, I got more clicks out of it. Great. They love what I say. Do they buy anything? Nope. Okay. So something I said made it attractive to them to come to me, but not attractive enough to sell. Um, and honestly, Kenny and I spend a lot of time talking about that, right? It's like, great. I said something cool. They came. Okay. Did they do anything? Nope. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Do we say that different? Like, you know, oh, I said that and they, they came and they bought something or they came, they added it to their cart. Okay, what did I say in there that made them do that? How do we hone that some more? How do we find, you know, a better answer there? So I think all of these things, um, you know, they go together. Um, the biggest parts for us were, were making sure that you connect your message and your keywords. Once you do that, it helps you drive all of these things, right? Your content, it helps you drive to a process, helps you start to build campaigns. So now, you know, you can build campaigns that start to help you get through the year with a lot of content, right? Um, and then in SEO, it's not a straight up process. When you start building momentum, the momentum adds to itself, right? So, um, you know, and then it starts to help you share your SEO across. Um, you start to get some really cool things that start to exponentially change what you rank for, right? Which is really cool, okay? Um, we wanted to make sure that we leave some time for questions and stuff like that. So I'm gonna get through this last bit pretty quick. Once you have your campaign, the other pieces that you can add to this now, because um, especially when you've got it proofed out, you think of the conversations Kenny and I have to kind of make sure that this process moves, that we're getting the right message out there, we're getting the right keywords, the blogs are working, the organic SEO is working. Now you can throw things like media articles or interviews in there, you know, <clears throat> a podcast, maybe um, some of those things that um, start to help you accelerate what you're doing, press releases now. Um, I've seen companies kind of go the other way where they do a press release um, without the SEO. It's a lot of Honestly, it's some wasted money, right? Because you're you you know to get a, a a press release out like on a on a wire actually costs you you know kind of like twelve to fourteen hundred dollars, give or take, right? Sometimes it's down to eight, but you're spending give or take a grand or so. If you don't have keywords or your blogs or your SEOs in place, it's kind of you you've thrown it into a hole where you may or may not get found, or you'll get kind of your five minutes of fame on routers, um, like in a in a PR wire or like a Yahoo finance sort of article, and then it goes away, right? So you need the rest of it in place. So it starts to fire and this becomes one more cherry on it. And then the last one is then to add an influencer, influencers, um, because that's super important to us, right? Is then now you've got someone who understands what your organic SEO looks like, because an influencer will be looking at that. They'll know 
the kinds of topics that are important to you based on your keyword rankings, the topics that you're putting out, right? So an influencer, the first thing they'll do is go back and look and what they'll see is, oh, I see all these articles. I know what these guys are after. I know how to relate to them. I know how to talk to them. I know what the key messages are, which means now your influencer is more effective for you. Okay. So um, all of this kind of snowballs together to help you gain momentum and help drive the business forward. Okay. Last thing we have is, um, you know, kind of like some pro tips on how to make things a little bit different. Um, so everyone talks about AI and chat GBT and that's cool. You can use that if you want. The one thing I would say to you is I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't use it to write the blogs for you where I, where we find that it's really, really we use um, Word Hero and Word Play. These are two other AI tools. But what we find is where the real kind of like nuggets are is helping you, you know, because there's only so long you can talk about a topic before you go, I have nothing left to say. I feel like I'm talking about the same thing over and over again. And, um, you know, tea is no different than any other, you know, thing you're selling is you can love it, but at some point you run out of topics or things you want to talk about. AI helps you break through writer's block in a lot of ways. It helps you with creativity. Um, you can, we use Wordplay, Word Hero. Um, you can use Chappie GBT. There's probably about 10 other tools out there. Um, but we find a lot of value in the blog outlines, um, you know, because the blog outlines give you all sorts of ways for you to think about topics a little bit different um, so that you, you know, you do get, um, you do get different topics or things that you may not think about that would be worthy of writing articles or generating content over. Um, if you're going to use a, a tool to help you write um, an outline in a blog itself, um, no harm in that. Just make sure you um, have a writer's voice in mind, right? Something that sounds like you. Because um, again, you know, everybody's using chat GBT for all sorts of things. If you use it, you now sound like everybody else. So you just want to make sure that you're kind of changing up, um, you know, words to sound like you um, say things the way that you would say it um, or the way your brand would say it, um, you know, because that's important. Um, and then you can also, the other one that's really interesting is you can source questions and comments and insights from consumers who have shared things with you. Um, and so, you know, like when you, when you um, start looking at some of these, you know, like the questions that people have for you, um, you'll get almost every brand has a frequently asked question. Um, so like for us, it was, um, do you have anything that's caffeine free? Right. And, and that made us kind of go, oh, it seemed obvious to us, but we're in the business, right? So you, you look at it every day in, day out, you forget. Right. And so that becomes something. So you'll actually see there are a bunch of articles right now. It's it's spring. The light is changing. People are working very hard. And so caffeine management is a hot topic right now. Um, and we got some of those from comments and questions that people were asking of us. So we wrote a bunch of articles on caffeine. You know, uh, it helps us do things a little bit different. OK, Um so hopefully this helps you a little bit as well. Uh, we know content can be a thing, um, you know, but but all of these things are things that kind of help you uh, break through a little bit, be a little bit more creative with um, where you want to go. Um, last things you want to do, um, and then and then I'll stop and we can we can answer any questions you have. Um, like what, you know, think about what measures you're using to see if you've got things the right things happening. So the example I'll give you is, is Kenny and I went down a path on messaging. We started to put out a bunch of blogs and then we saw a lot of people come to the site. Click, 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 click. Great. Where's the money? Show us the money, right? And people weren't buying. So that made us go, hmm, is it right? Well, it's kind of cool because we got engagement, we got organic traffic, but we didn't get sales. So we went back to tune, right? And then we retuned it. We got less traffic, but we got some sales out of it. So that helped us go, okay. So this teaches us something about how people 
read, how they digest, how they think about what we do. There are also things that we've done that generated no traffic, um, generated no sales. And those ones you kind of laugh at and go, okay, that was not great. Um, that wasn't amazing. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's go back and, and try something different. Um, but you kind of need to, when you start doing these campaigns, that's what you're thinking about is like, what kinds of SEOs do I rank for? So now that I'm done the vanilla campaign, do I rank for vanilla? How high do I rank for vanilla? Um, are my competitors ranking higher than me? Like, where do I fit? Do I need to keep going with the campaign? Do I need to do something different? You know, all those sort of things as well. Okay. Um, and then that is that is all. That is the, hopefully that was helpful to you. We will definitely answer. There's a bunch of questions in the comments. So I'll answer those and then um, definitely chime in and, and let us know if there are other questions. Um, the first question, um, are there any um, are there any, uh, performing blog formulas you've seen success with lately short form versus long form, uh, feature video or not? Um, so, um, probably short form blogs, um, have, we've seen the most success over. Um, and so that's, you know, kind of, uh, 500 to 700 words or less. Um, so we've seen that definitely um, really great formula there. And then um, probably the what really works for us right now um, is what we'll do is write the blog article the way we see fit. Um, and then we'll go back and comb over the blog to insert any keywords that we really wanted to get in there um, so that you're kind of... Um, in a good way, your keyword stuffing, right? Because anywhere that I can say a word that I, I want a keyword to fit, I will make it fit, right? Um, Google won't penalize you for it because you're not jamming the words in there. They're still appropriate in the, in the narrative you're telling, but that allows you to get better organic SEO out of it. Um, and then it makes your blog article work the hardest for you that it could possibly work. Um, so we find that that works well. And then we find that stacking, um, our formulas is kind of like getting three posts out of every blog. Um, so we actually write our blogs that way, where we're thinking about like three sections that we can talk about in socials. Um, and that helps, right? Because now you're getting, um, some social media in there and then, um, and then all of those things start to kind of like, um, stack on top of each other to help you out. Um, what's interesting too, is with the podcast is we'll sometimes do, um, transcriptions in our, our recordings, and that also helps with SEO as well. So Emily, hopefully that answers your question. Um, uh, you know, uh, get in there if we, we haven't done that right. Kenny, anything to add? I, I think, I, I think Emily it depends on, on, on it mm -hmm. depends is always the keyword, right? Mm -hmm. I think a non-technical products like RTs, I think short is probably best. Um, if it's a technical aspect or something that requires a little more information long, I mm -hmm. think we all know we live in a world where an attention span is probably 10 to 15 seconds, which is why the TikTok and the reels and the stories are so popular. So I think short video, if relevant, definitively helps because I think we have become really trained um, as a society to appreciate that. So I think it's like anything. I think it depends, but probably for most of the people in the industry that Phil and I deal with, which is a lot of you people as well, probably short and videos are not going to hurt as a general rule, but it really um, is. It depends. I hate to say it that way, but it is kind of, a depends. The other thing I'll say is um, just remember like if, if, if there are folks in here that are B2B instead of B2C, you have a slightly different formula, right? Different like messaging. when you're B2B, you're, you're <clears throat> talking about decision makers who need to think about, yeah. you know, getting the best ROI for their, for their, um, for their investment. So you, you probably do need a bit more educational work done. And so in that case, you, you probably short videos, those sort of things, a landing page, um, you know, I've been in businesses where you, you've got to be able to do white papers and case studies that also help you. So some of that stuff also will play in here. So, um, 
So, and then B2C is a little bit less of that. It's more social proof. It's more reviews and things like that, but less Again, it comes educational back to like stuff. Said, yeah. You know, know your customer. Yeah. You really need to know your customer. So if your customer is a retailer or your customer is an end consumer, they're yeah. different. And even within that, which retailer? Loblaws yeah. retailer, uh, you know, Donald's market retailer, two different yeah. worlds. Yeah. So just really get to know who you're trying to talk to. Um, okay, the other, the next question is, can you please comment on Google Trends and search terms? Um, so a little bit different. So Google Trends is also a good way to see what people are talking about. So Google Trends, I lump in with hashtag searches and those sort of things. So you would use trends to see um, what kinds of topics are out there um, or how important the topic is. You're like, so um, we wrote a bunch of articles on caffeine. And so when I started looking at this, it came from frequently asked questions of people trying to identify what teas we had that were caffeine free. Um, but that did take me down a road of hashtag searches, for example, in Instagram to go, what happens when I put in hashtag caffeine or hashtag caffeine free? And then I saw, you know, kind of like millions of posts in Instagram around caffeine free. Well, that says to me, Millions of posts trending lately means, yeah, you know what? This is kind of an important topic people are searching. So in my mind, that's a tally for, oh, this is an interesting trend that we need to talk about or at least be a part of, right? Um, Google Trends would be the same thing. I did pull it as well. And I looked at, okay, this is a trending topic. Where is it trending? Uh, maybe sometimes that matters, right? So Marissa, hopefully that kind of answers your question is... Um, is that definitely there is, uh, you can use those tools, but search terms themselves, um, what you're known for is a little bit different because they're, um, it's harder, you've got to, you've got to, what was I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is like with Google Trends, it's about identifying the places that you want to be. And then search terms are really that you've been identified as that you're part of that trend, right? Is that pe when people are searching for, trying to solve a problem that you're already known for those words. So a little bit different. Um, come back if I, I've i kind of screwed that up or not answered your question. Um, okay, the next one. How to find a balance between trying to be original, which is your suggestion basically. Um, yeah, uh, and then whatever other brands is talking about at the time, like Easter being perceived, yeah. Um, since some people, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this one, this one is about how do you do your own thing, but also make sure you're relevant to, um, clients or consumers. Um, and yeah, so I, I think, um, Gina, that's, that's really important, right? Like is, um, what I would say is, I think so one is when you know your customer, you'll know. I think it comes back things. to that. So I'll start there. Yeah. You've got to know your, if your customer yeah. wants Easter, talk Easter. Our yeah. point is I wouldn't go down the path yeah. of pigeonholing myself into a pre-made calendar because it's there. Mm -hmm. If it's relevant to your customer. Yeah. I mean, if that's who you're talking to, then that's what you need to talk about. Yeah. If, I guess what we were trying to say is the first, the first thing that people run down is a pre-made calendar that the entire society will use. If your product lends to that, then I think you have to look at that. That's not to say you can't make it an original post about Easter or within that play. But really all of this comes down to is you need to know who your customers are and what they want to hear from you. And if Easter is what they wanna hear, by all means, nobody's gonna say not to do it. But I wouldn't talk about Easter just for the sake of talking about Easter because it's on a calendar. And I think that's more what we were trying to say yeah. is that a lot of don't times- Don't back in there. Yeah, don't, don't back in there. You yeah. drive your content. Don't let the rest of it drive your content because unfortunately you will, it's a lot harder for you to be found when you do that. I don't know if that made any more sense or helped you or not, but that's sort of what the intent of yeah. that conversation was. It wasn't yeah. to ignore- a holiday or anything like that, if it's relevant to your business. If it's not relevant to your business, I'd probably highly suggest you you work on your own keywords and your own path. 
based on what your customer wants. Yeah, like Mike's comment is a, a really valid one, right? Because Mike says that, um, yeah. you know, if you think posting on those days is of importance is good, but not relying on those posts for driving business is key, right? And and so that, that it's 100% It's not true. relevant it, to you. Yeah, yeah. Could be, tell you the way, if you're an Easter chocolate maker, guess what? Post the heck yeah. out of Easter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you're a tea drinker, maybe, or a tea maker or a manufacturer, maybe it's not as important. Yeah. Yeah. It'll still Hope make a helps. mention. Like, so, yeah, so fine. don't get me wrong. Like somewhere in our socials, we'll probably say that, right? We'd be jerks not to wish people happy well, Easter happy or any of those sort of things. Whatever but, holiday it is for sure. Yeah. But, but it doesn't mean that we're, we're going to kind of build no. a campaign around it or that, that we're, we're going to drive hang our hat on that. Yeah. I hope that helped. Okay. So those are all the written questions. Um, I didn't see any hands up or anything. Does anyone else have any other questions? We're kind of like four minutes to the end. Are there any last questions? If if, if anyone has questions or um, if you need help with this. Oh, Marissa, you have a question. Yes, yes, yes. Do you want to just unmute and then ask? Or I don't know if they can do that. Oh, thanks. That makes it easier. I couldn't type fast enough. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just was wondering, like, I can brainstorm about my business and like some keywords, and that gives me my own agenda and stuff. But when I was referring to Google, I'm just and I liked how you were taught you're integrating some other different, you know, tools out there. And I'm trying to think about what could I do to see for message testing. And like, there's a trial and error, but you know, I was like, how can I use Google to see what words people are already searching? Like if immune system health is like a popular topic if, or, you know, whatever it happens to be. But I felt like I was wondering if Google or if there's any other tools out there that you would suggest like testing some of your keywords to see if like you have a really word, a, a word that's not very popular, why would you use it? Agree, agree. And, and so you're, you're absolutely right. So in that context, um, Google Trends will help you a little bit. Um, Instagram will help you a little bit. Uh, immune system stuff. Like the other thing you can do is um, Google Ads. You can sign into Google Ads for free. And then Google Ads has a keyword explorer in there. So oh. if you punch those words in there, it'll actually give you adjacent words or similar words. And it'll actually tell you what people are competing on as well. So you see a whole bunch of things. You see how popular is the search term, who else is competing, not um, uh, specifically who is competing, but how many other people are competing on the terms. And then you can even see uh, like what somebody might pay um, for that keyword. If you were to compete uh, on that keyword, um, Google Keyword Planner is what it's called. So um, all of those things will kind of help you, um, you know, kind of like, zone in on on the words that are in that category that you might want to have oh perfect thanks i've never mm -hmm. heard that thank you yeah yeah no worries no worries um okay so i i think that's i think that's it we got i got like one minute before Sumner starts shutting me down but um i think the the big things here are keep working on them if you ever need a moment if you don't know kenny and i we take phone calls all the time um because we're, we're kind of dummies like that, but, but we love it. Uh, we love doing it. And so even if you're working through a campaign and you want, um, you know, a couple of guys who like to talk to help you with like figuring out, sorting out what those mean, we can definitely help you with those. So um, our emails are down below and, um, you know, we, uh, we would thank you for coming today. This has been amazing. Phil and Kenny, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time today to speak to us. That was great. Very valuable information in there. Um, and I will be sending out a another survey link, the one that was still in the chat box there, um, as well as these slides and any other follow-up items. Um, and thank you all so much to everyone for joining us today, taking the time out of your day to be here. So we appreciate that. And I will also make mention that um, we will actually see Kenny again 
at our uh, May breakfast series on May 15th. So if you want to hear more from Kenny, make sure to buy a ticket on our website. <laughs> if you want to find Kenny <laughs> anywhere, just ask Sumner. And then Sumner and I, Sumner and I have already figured this out. So anywhere you want Kenny to be, anyway. maybe we can get him to juggle or like do things. Anyway, it's all good. He's your guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Kenny and Phil. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Of course. Bye.